Hi, I'm Chuck Olenek. I'm a reenactor. That means I wear funny clothes and try to bring the past to life. And for 36 years in the classroom, that's exactly what I did. I would dress in the garb or armor for the time period. I would wear it all day. I've got a lot of funny looks. Um, but this kind of helped my students connect the dots. And after 36 years of teaching, plus also being involved in a reenactment organization far longer than that, I have a room full of garb at the house. I have a bunch of realia or manipulatives. That's basically teacher talk for stuff you can touch, uh, which served as a portable museum when I bring it into class. So I have all this. I still have a passion for bringing the past to life, and I have a desire to preserve landmarks, and since those have been going away, and since there has been controversy over some landmarks, I want to create a visual record. So what I'm involved in, I like to very pretentiously call my mission odyssey, is I plan to visit each of the missions in Alta California, each of the uh, assistencias, those are the spin-off missions designed to grow up to become missions. Each of the estancias, that's kind of a new wrinkle I added uh, a few trips ago. And those were the ranches that supported the missions. And each of the presidios, those were the fortifications designed to protect the missions. So what I am doing is I am basically now following the Camino Real. I have currently traveled to three missions, three assistencias, and one presidio, and the old mission dam because it deserved a mention. And I'm traveling from Mission San Juan Capistrano up to Mission San Gabriel Archangel, and that's about 58.4 miles away, depending on who you talk to. So I hope you stick with me on this adventure. The story of Mission San Gabriel Archangel starts in 1771 when 10 missionaries arrive at the Mission San Carlos. And Father Sarah decides he's putting his plans in motion. He wants to found two more missions that summer and one of those missions was designed to close the long gap between his headquarters in Monterey at Mission San Carlos and the mission in San Diego and so an expedition of 10 soldiers and two Padres left San Diego. The third of the missions, San Antonio de Padua, was founded about a day's journey south of San Carlos. Okay, and this was going to be the plan for the establishment of missions. The fourth, they were trying to figure out a convenient distance from Mission San Diego. And so that ended up, it was originally supposed to be founded along what I had read was the River of Earthquakes. And I interpreted that as well, since the Mission San Gabriel is near the San Gabriel River, I thought that was it. No, that's the Santa Ana River. And the two Padres in charge looked at the site and went, mm, not so good. And they pushed further north and they came to this place. This is the site that Padres Pedro Cambon and Angel Somera selected for 
establishing Mission San Gabriel. And when they arrived here, and this is right by the uh, Rio Hondo and the San Gabriel River, um, when they came here, the local Tongva really were not too happy with the Spaniards moving into the neighborhood until the legend goes that the Padres display the tapestry of the Virgin Mary and the Tongva were so over overwhelmed by this that they were handing over their necklaces and there was a lot of ceremony about okay we like you guys this is cool and so the mission will get established here the first building surrounded by a weak palisade was a 45 by 18 foot structure of adobe and wood roofed with tule reeds from the waters of Whittier Narrows The new mission prospered as a farm and a cattle ranch, and in 1774, it became a stopping point for Juan Batista Danza's party, establishing the first land link with Mexico City. The mission continued here for a few years. Unfortunately, one thing that wasn't realized was this is a floodplain. A flood devastated the mission. In 1775, in order to get away from the flooding, the mission was moved north by about five miles. So this is the mission that is known as San Gabriel. It was from here that the De Anza expedition went on to establish San Francisco in 1776. And in 1781, another expedition marched nine miles to establish El Pueblo de Los Angeles. As the mission was being constructed, so were living quarters for the Padres at what later became known as Rancho de las Tunas Adobe. Originally built in 1776 with three rooms, a granary, dining, and storage area, it has expanded to 23 rooms and reportedly has a tunnel going to the mission. The present Church of Stone was begun in 1794 and designed by Padre Antonio Curzado who was in charge of the mission at that time. With the help of Padre Sanchez and Tongva labor, it was erected. Originally there was an arched roof of stone which was badly cracked in an 1803 earthquake and was torn out and replaced with a timbered roof. The buttresses on the side might have subconsciously come to Corzado because he was trained in Cordova, Spain and there was a cathedral with similar buttresses. The original Espadaña or bell wall contained three bells and it was located in a different part of the mission. The 1812 earthquake took care of that. Afterwards a larger six bell bell wall was erected. Father Sarah had his own residence when he stayed at the mission. Like most missions, Mission San Gabriel Archangel was built in a quadrangle, probably for defensive purposes. What's behind the wall? Well, you have the Campo Santo or uh, cemetery where you have the graves of 6,000 neophytes. While the first wine produced in Alta California emerged from San Juan Capistrano's winery in 1783, San Gabriel had the largest vineyard in Spanish California and was the botanical source of many of the vines planted at the other missions. Until 1850, mission grapes represented the entirety of winemaking in the state. So what else are you gonna find hidden behind the thick adobe walls and the massive wooden doors? Well, besides the gardens, which were also being 
grow enough just for aesthetics, but for herbs as well. You have the old winery, you have open fireplaces and a kitchen that's enclosed. There's an aqueduct to supply water. There are going to be vats for making soap and making tallow. There's also a tannery because the leather industry is a big industry. And probably find the smithy back here. Every mission grew food. That was one of the missions of the missions. And in doing so, they're raising cattle and they're raising sheep and they're growing various crops. And that means if they're growing grains, they're going to need a grist mill to grind them up. This is the one for Mission San Gabriel. And it was built around 1816 by the uh, Tongva, later renamed the Gabrieleno, conveniently for the Spanish. And it was under the watchful eye, that was the uh, quote that I saw, of the Padres. And it only operated for about seven years. This was the first water-powered grist mill in Southern California and it provided seven years of service until in 1823 it was replaced with something better. Looks like I had more material than could fit into this video. So that means the story of Mission San Gabriel continues in the next installment. I hope you stick with me.